Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Side Quest and Elden Ring. Settle in, because I think you and I are going to be here for a little while. We got us a big mean boss fight to win. And this is going to go one of two ways. Either that uh, Sekiro final boss Ishin good luck is going to kick in and we're going to just ace this in one or two tries inexplicably, or the more likely outcome, uh, we're going to be here all day. But we are winning today one way or another. So, I have two pieces of information here to work with. The one thing that we learned last time pretty clearly is that blocking is not a strategy that is going to work against this boss. Like, if she connects with us, whether we blocked or didn't, she's getting health back, and that negates all of our hard work, so we just need to be dodge rolling uh, everything as best we can. Unless there's some other clever way to get around that, but I've not figured it out, so let's just assume we gotta dodge. Second thing, I have been informed that bleed damage works pretty good on Millennia as a strategic option, because if you can manage to get bleed to proc on her, then awesome. Uh, that'll take a big chunk off her health bar and maybe help to cancel out the health she is inevitably getting back when she hits you. So uh, it just helps to work the health down faster. So with all that in mind, I've shifted my equipment loadout a little bit. We've still got our Lord Sworn's Blood Greatsword. Uh, I've shifted it to a Blood Greatsword instead of a heavy one because that does have a good amount of blood loss buildup, which is great. It does mean that our damage per sword swing is considerably lower and that counterbalance may be suboptimal. It may be that I swap that back, but I figured it was worth trying just to see how well the uh, bleed effect strategy worked for us. Since the other shield was doing nothing for us, I've swapped to the Great Turtle Shell, which at the very least increases our stamina regeneration. So more rolling, more attacking, that seems like it'll help. We have this mostly just to cast regen. I guess we can try opening with the freeze spell. Uh, like that did kind of work that one try started pretty well, but she does dodge very effectively, so I don't know if I want to count on that. Still with our same armor loadout as before, pretty good setup. Uh, still with the Urtree's Favor and Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. I swapped the last two out, though, because jump attacks weren't something that were being super helpful, and honestly, because I've put some more points in Endurance, I don't, I didn't need the, uh, the added equip load help from a Talisman slot especially since I'm using this lighter sword. So I uh, instead decided to lean further into the blood loss thing and see if I can just raise my attack power further with blood loss happening. I don't know if this is a good strat. We may swap this one out. I've also tried raising poise just in case. This may, like these two are very optional. We're experimenting here, but maybe this will help me get in more attacks. Maybe if I can just be more aggressive getting the hits in, tanking a hit or two, but uh, still getting in hits of my own, maybe. Maybe that'll work out. I've also gone and raised my Mimic Tear Ashes up to plus 10. I'm not going to start using them quite yet. I expect I will later, but I just want to get a better feel for the fight first before I start pulling out some more stops. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get this inaugural death out of the way. We've got a lot of attempts at this probably today. Hello again. I look forward to spending the day with you. Ah, your sword is so much longer reaching than mine. We could also attempt putting on a bleed effect on this sword as well. Just for even more bleeding. Yeef. Yeah, it's definitely way less damage per swing, which is less than ideal. Oh boy. And I don't know how many swings it's going to take to actually get the bleed effect to proc, but let's uh, let's uh, see if we can find out. And to start getting a feeling for our dodge rolling. I was trying to deploy that common wisdom of roll into attacks a little bit more often, but when she does that spin kick, that catches me if I roll forward past her all the same. So I'm thinking either away or to the side is the strategy to start employing for the dodging. We can also try making more use of this. So long as she's in range. Which she wasn't that time, but you know. Hmm. Too early on that one. 
Nope. Let's figure you out. Yeah. You do get staggered easy, and that's nice, but I think as soon as you get some distance, I need to be ready to roll. Oh boy. Yep, all the health back. But bleed effect does do some pretty good work. If I can manage to land it without dying. Whoop. You got some good poise on you in the middle of that move. All your moves, it looks like, so I'm not going to be able to stagger you out of your existing attacks. I shouldn't try to open. I should try to counter. Better than that. Ah! The reach, though. Yeah! Ooh, that one's the nasty one. That one's the real nasty one. Let's see. So it took, like, a good four or five swings. to get that bleed effect to uh, kick off. I wonder if, just as further experimenting, if we swap this back to a heavy version, we lose the blood loss buildup, we get a lot more damage per swing, which is nice, and we can instead use... Eh, it requires using an item, which is less than ideal, but we can instead use one of these... to get a bleed effect on the thing. Honestly, it might be easier just to, uh... There we go. And in that case, we don't need this down here. Yeah, let's try this. Yep. It's actually not significantly more damage, actually, per swing. I'm surprised. Whew, it's devastating. Yeah, the incredible range, though. All right, a jump attack does kind of stop and stagger you. That's pretty cool. Ah, greedy. I am starting to think maybe actually the, uh... The other version, just the blood version of the sword that has the bleed effect on it inherently. Lower damage per attack, but we're not having to use an additional item to get the bleed effect. And then just learn to dodge better, obviously. Second thing I want to test, just to sort of like see how it changes the dynamic of the fight. If we summon Mimic Tear in there, having her distracted will obviously help, but the one thing I really want to see is does Mimic Tear taking damage get her health back? My guess is yes. But let's gather some information here. Come on, me. Let's science this a bit. You know, I bet I was doing less damage per attack because I think I was only one-handing the uh, sword at the time as well. So... Okay, she does get health back for attacking other me, which is not good, because I don't trust other me to dodge very good. But other me could get in even more bleed damage. So that could add up a lot, actually. Yep, 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 really could. Might actually... Ah, that's a shame I didn't get in that one, but... Yeah. Mimic Tear definitely helps. Because her health regain is... significantly outclassed by having two of us attacking at once. Oof. That was close. Now, don't get hit by every single thing. Me. And other me. Yeah, that does really work. Wow. 
It's good to know we got this tool in our pocket later. Because, again, I do want to fight her more normally. Assuming we don't just win this time. Where are you going? Stop getting all your health back. I took it fair and square. What a cool moveset. Just all her animations were rad. Woohoo! Yeah! Gotta be faster dodging that one. And that one. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I wanna learn her moveset a little bit better. Like, I know we... I could probably accelerate the pace of winning this fight by continuing to just bring in Mimic Tier, but I'd love to... Just because I've not done a lot of this in this particular run. In Elden Ring, you have so many options for avoiding fights, coming back to them later, trying new tools, uh, cheesing if you want to. And there have been so many boss fights, I didn't want to, like, stop and do the learning process for every single darn one. Uh, given that this is the infamous one, and is extra hard, and it does sort of require learning in order to pass the test in a way. I want to get it, get it in a little bit of that practice time. You know, she deserves it. All right. I wonder which side is the best side to dodge her stuff. Not that way, that's for sure. Gracious. Badly done. Hello, me again. Sorry to bother you at this hour. It seemed like you weren't busy. Hmm. Yowchies. Don't get grabbed. Power through, we got the poise. That aggression does seem to be rewarded. Ah, I missed. That's not what you want at all. Nope. Oh, that's such a nasty combo of swings. Uh oh. Oop. You held longer. What on earth? I forgot about that one. Wow. <laughs> Noted. When she goes. When she goes way up in the air and holds there a long time, I guess just roll non-stop to a side or something, because you got to be nowhere close. Or pray that you uh, can knock her out of it. Still, that was uh, actually pretty informative there. Just going in and being a little more reckless, trying to like get in a roll and counter immediately. When it connected, was really rewarded. Okay. Yeah, I gotta remember my sword's range, though, which is to say bad. Or never as good as I want it to be, anyway. Ah, come on, that one shouldn't have missed. Ouch, jeez. That one should have missed. Nope. Oof. Getting wrecked here. I'm learning parts of it. Real quick, let me try the heavy version of this sword again, but two-handed, just to see... damage number difference.
do actually need to connect, though. Yeah, it's more, but it's not significantly more. Woohoo! Yeah. That was just unnecessary greed. Yeah, I think the uh, bleed version of the sword is the way to go. Yeah, that was the wrong way to dodge. Ah, uh, got greedy there. Yeah, no, definitely bleed version of the sword. Bleed version of the sword, and for kicks... Let's attempt this again, see if it actually pays off with any consistency. Probably should have done it sooner, but... Not a terrible opener. Ah. Always just an inch short with this sword. Oh, here we go. Yeah, goodness. I think rolling toward her there when she does the attack might be the way to go. If I can just get behind it. The follow-ups might wreck me afterward, but... I don't know, could be something there. Oof, boy. Yeah, I've not figured out how to not get hit by that one. Ah, dang it. Death counter is definitely getting a workout today. Yeah, maybe just eating a hit sometimes is just the way to go. <laughs> and rolling behind that for sure, when I can pull it off. Ah. Now the grab. Such a promising start, too. Okay, okay, well... You know, one thing I haven't tried is I haven't tried getting in some, like... Faster throwables in there in the mix. This is sort of like, mm, it's not going to interrupt her or anything, but. Oh, uh, that's going to hurt. Yeah, what even do you do to that? Goodness. I did roll past her and then she just turned around, so I guess just trying to roll past her three times? Whew, boy. I don't think running would be fast enough to get away from that one. Maybe this poise one is not the ideal talisman. Maybe there's a better... A better something for my whole setup here. Not 100% sure what. Like, raises attack power with successive attacks, maybe? I don't know how much that does, though. And my poise is way down, but successive attacks are kind of what I'm going for here. We could try that out, see what it does. Ooh, also, I hadn't considered changing this up. Because, like, negating one hit, sure, that's good. If I'm not opening with the cold breath, this is going to do nothing. So let's see if there's something that's more useful. Enhances dodge rolls for a time could be interesting. Consecutive attacks growing stronger could also be a fun thing to lean into. Yeah, let's boost max HP and uh, enhance dodge rolls for a time. Let's just let's see what happens with that. I'm curious. So first this one. Then this. And we are pretty buffed up here. Yeah. Now. 
with that nonsense. Yeah, not what I meant to do, but glad it saved me. Come on, I was rolling. No grabs. Nope. Nah. Got lucky there. Ah, I thought I was out of reach. Okay, we've had a little fun here. Let's go ahead and get uh, our Mimic tier back in the mix. Give ourselves both a little buff. Hmm, may have been too early for it to affect them, but I have it, and that's nice. Let's see what we can do here. Yeah. With both of us doing work, and I ideally not both of us getting hit. Yeah. Thanks, me. So if we can get a good run like that, oh boy. Yeah, boy, I don't know how you dodge all that nonsense. I'll try running next time. I don't think it's going to work, but I'll try it. There you are, both of us. That's better. Oh, boy. Mimic Tear Me sure took a hit there. Ouch. Leaf, gracious. Here it goes. Run! Oh no, they're going for my other me, which at least means I survived. That's something. Out of range. Look out. Don't be in that. There's no way there's not a phase two to this. That is so cool looking. And I'm in trouble.
And other me is gone soon, no doubt. Yep. Ah, dang. What a cool second phase. Okay. Let's see. Definitely going to be using Mimic Tear as part of the strategy here. It's possible that... Hmm. It's possible that there could be someone else who could be somewhat useful. We could try Latana, but given how much... Uh, given how much... Millennia dodges all projectiles. I don't think that's going to do anything. It's possible. Well, you know what? Let's see what... Like, these guys won't be contributing anything to my... Uh, bleed buildup and damage moral. And given she's hitting a lot more of my friendlies, she may get healed more, too. I don't know exactly how that works, but, uh... Let's see about that one. I'm curious. I can also buff all of them up. And should. Yeah, let's uh, experiment with that one. I could also try casting the Vikes lightning thing. I don't think I want to, though. Let's just keep building up the bleed. That has sort of worked. So... Let's give him a little buff. And we get to work. Yeah. Yeah, I think hitting them is getting her a lot of health back here. They are staggering her a bunch. Yeah. She's getting a lot of health back, too. From all that nonsense. I do appreciate them interrupting her a ton, though. That is probably keeping her from doing some really devastating stuff here. But she's getting all the health back, so yeah. This seems like it's not going to work out for me. Unless we can kind of keep her cornered like this. Oop, nope, now we're dead. Unless they get targeted, in which case they just give her all of her health back and lose half of theirs. Yeah, yeah. Groups, not gonna work out for this. Ouch. Yeah. Blade of Mikola. It was a worthy experiment. Nope, as ever, if you want something done, you gotta do it yourself. Hmm, a little bit early. But you can do that too, I forgot. Good idea, me.
And I swapped to using the uh, Great Turtle Talisman or whatever, the, the one that uh, boosts stamina regen further, which is, I think, going to help a lot. I don't know. Yep. Oh, I gotta figure out what to do against that. Because if I get targeted thus far, it's a death. Going better this time. Stronger opening, anyway. The more health Mimic Tier Me can have... Okay. Ah, I almost survived that one, but yeah, I think I need to dodge toward her at exact timing for all three flurries. And that might work. Just caught in a corner now, which is probably a good spot. Well, no, nope, now we are. That's the opposite of the good thing I was hoping for. Almost. And Mimic Tear actually has some health, which is nice. There we go. All right. This is a phase two that might out work out. Oh boy, that Scarlet Rot builds fast. Yeah, our only hope seems to be taking advantage of her lower poise. Oof, boy. And there goes me. Soon to be followed by me. Hey, actually survived that one. Ah. We can do it. It'll take a bunch of tries, but we can do it. I assumed that Latana's not going to work, but now I want to at least test that theory before I go through with just trying to win the rest of this. Just in case. Because if she does work gangbusters, which I don't expect, but if she does, I'll feel silly. She does get in some hits, but if, uh... Yeah. But this way, basically, I have to keep her focused on me, which may not be super ideal. And I don't know if those arrows are going to stagger her out of stuff she's trying to do. It is kind of working a little. Yeah. Oh, boy. Ah, jeez. Weirdly, that did almost kind of seem to... Let me, let me give that one more shot. Plus a rune arc, because we can take this pretty seriously now, I think. At this point, I've tried... Just about all the clever outsmarting strategies I can think of. It's really just execution now. Don't... Attack my archer. Need the archer to live. Attack me. Attack me or get indecisive between the two of us. Please don't. Oh boy. Wow, I actually survived it for the first time. Barely. I probably won't survive much more, but I did survive that first little stretch and I take some joy in that. Okay, let's... I, I've shifted some things around. I think I'm going to shift a few more here. Going back to the Mimic Tear Ash, because getting in some more bleed uh, stacks while we can helps. Even though Mimic Me is getting hit a lot more, uh, they're getting in damage a lot faster as well and uh, are providing a little bit more distraction from time to time. And I don't think Latino is going to last long once Phase 2 kicked in. I don't think that's going to happen. We'll be using Rune Arcs for sure. I've changed my Talisman to... I, I saw when I was looking up the uh, number of phases, I saw that apparently this is also not a terrible one to try out for melee. Raises defense when HP is at maximum. Granted, I don't heal to very tip-top max a lot of the time, so I don't know if this is going to do as good of work as keeping, I don't know, the uh, additional attack power with blood loss in the vicinity. I feel like that might be still playing more to my strengths. But we can see. We can see. Uh, we can also try increasing our 
physical damage negation a little bit better. In a way that doesn't uh, over-encumber us too much. Like, Knight Cavalry Armor bumps it up. Can try that out. Um, now what else can we do without getting overloaded here? I guess the rest was already pretty good. Radon's Gauntlets, not bad. Yeah, Radon stuff just kind of better in general for a lot of this, so maybe we'll... Try that out. Yep, yep. Oh, heck. Yeah, Radon set in general is just better physical uh, damage negation, and I think robustness is the one that's gonna... Robustness and immunity both, honestly. And this feels also just thematically appropriate. And... We look a little much, but whatever you got to do, you know? <laughs> yeah, I feel not too bad about this. Yeah, I think about at this point, I have seen most of what she's going to try to do. I have learned how to avoid a lot of things. Not all, but a lot of things. It's really just a matter of putting in the time and practice and uh, just getting lucky one of these times. So... I guess that's what I do now. But I'm not going to make the rest of y'all do that. No, we have a tradition around here, and we've not really had to use it yet, almost surprisingly, but in this side quest series, whenever we get to a boss fight that has taken a lot of tries, just to uh, save y'all some time and speed things along, we do a montage, usually set to some music by one Rich Odd E.B. He has seen us through some very difficult times in the past, and I believe I have full and complete faith that Rich Oddie B will see us through once again. So, I guess there's nothing left to do but cue up the music and just start making attempts until we win, because win we shall. Here we go.
my brother. I'm sorry. I finally met my match. <sighs> Tough fight. Very cool, though. What a cool boss. What a very cool boss. And I'm glad that Elden Ring does. It feels like Elden Ring at large is an easier game than the other FromSoft games just because you do have the ability to go and level up. And just by exploring more thoroughly in all the places available to you and finding more tools and more gear and getting more runes and leveling up further, you can make yourself very prepared for any fight ahead of you. And I could have done more here too. Like there's, I've been pretty thorough going through the whole game, but there's definitely more places I could have gone. Grinding I could have done to get some more levels to be stronger here for this fight. Probably some other fancy tricks and builds that I could have swapped to, to try to tackle the situation. But it was doable. And I'm glad that Elden Ring does have one, like at least one especially very big tough fight. Normally I would like uh, on Friday, last episode when first encountering this, I was a little bit on the fence of how much I liked their approach to having her heal when she uh, hits you because that does kind of just rule out a lot of strategies and sort of forces... I, I don't think FromSoft bosses are at their best when the solution, the way to win is basically either execute perfectly or near perfectly on the fight or just get extremely lucky if you make a few mistakes. Generally, I think that that's not... That doesn't make for the best kind of uh, FromSoft fight. But given that, I'm pretty sure this is an optional one. Having, like, a one optional, real mean, real tough fight that does force extremely solid execution to win for the real hardcore players who just love having that really hard fight to master. It's a good addition to have, I think. Let's read those descriptions just a real quick. Remembrance of Melania, goddess of rot, hewn into the Erd tree. The power of its namesake can be unlocked by the finger reader. Alternatively, it can be used to gain a great bounty of runes. Mikola and Melania are both the children of a single god. As such, they are both Empyreans, but suffered afflictions from birth. One was cursed with eternal childhood, the other harbored rot within. Interesting. Yeah, I guess I didn't know a whole lot about Mikola. The great rune of the shard bearer millennia, devoid of any benediction, seek the isolated divine tower stands beyond the lost great bridge. Which one was that again? I feel like it's one of these back here. Maybe the one out in the middle of Yeah, you. Which we warp to from I forget. Maybe it was the one out here? Yeah, this divine bridge, which... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We should go there next time. Whew. Well, this has probably been a long one and a long edit for Carrie. Thank you very much, Richard EB, for the determination, as always, and to Carrie for the editing of that <laughs> montage. Uh, I'm sure that'll be fun. Anyway, this has probably been a chunky episode. Let's go ahead and call it. I'll see y'all next time for I don't know what exactly... But I'm sure it'll be great. Maybe I should rest here just in case something happens. No, we're good. Cool. Never mind. What's, um... Maybe I should look around a little more. Just real fast, because there's a chair back here, which is, I am guess, that's where she started out. Uh... Is this Mikola? Like, the, the sort of face and upper torso we see in this tree. Hmm, I wonder. And this is where she fell, I think. So it's just sort of what remains of her. I am wondering if Millicent is the flower we saw on the way in. That's kind of what I was assuming. This seems to su to like further suggest that I might have been right with that assumption. 
We'll explore the area a little more next time, just to be sure. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time for more Elden Ring. Goodbye!